Greetings, everyone. DFG here, Gideon's Flight. Hey, guys, I want to take a moment and uh, talk to you. I know we haven't spoken uh, in a couple of days, but uh, in the name of good communication, uh, sharing of information, um, I just, of course, want to get back on the J-O-B, right? Getting that information out. Um, today's conversation is about, you know, what's going on with the so-called, um, you know, church. I was going to say the black church, but I don't think that's that's a fair description any longer because when you say the black church, it, it, it almost uh, comes out sounding as though there's a black church and then there's a white church and an Asian church. Quite frankly, there's only, you know, uh, one church in terms of, you know, religion. And in this case, I'm talking about so-called uh, Christian Christianity. Um, uh, as a faith-based religion. This is, is, I guess my question is, you know, what is going on? And I want you guys to listen to me carefully, especially, uh, well, you know, really all, everyone. I want to say to you young people, but when I say young, I'm talking about those of you who are in your, you know, 30s, you know, maybe 40s, uh, because that's still relatively young. Uh, you are the leaders of today, so, you know, obviously it's important that, you um, I communicate, you know, with you as, as an elder and with simply meaning someone older with a little bit more knowledge in 30 plus years in so-called religion. And also, you know, as you guys already know, 30 some odd years uh, in corporate, you know, America uh, from a leadership, executive leadership perspective. So I, I share that because I, I want you to understand clearly I'm not coming at you uh, disrespectfully. And what I mean by that, I'm not coming at you from a place of ignorance. If I didn't have... 33 decades of knowledge in these fields, I would keep my mouth shut. I'm smart enough, you know, to know to do that. But to keep, you know, 60 years uh, combined information from you is injustice, not only to you, but injustice to society as a whole. So let's get back to the subject matter at hand. What's going on with these churches? You know, here's what's going on with them. Back in 2001, uh, at the time President Bush came up with a program that he called Faith-Based faith Initiatives. And what and you can look this up, by the way. Uh, and not only did uh, George Bush support it, uh, Jr., uh, Barack Obama supports it, or supported it, and Donald Trump also supported it. So it's a presidential White House uh, campaign or program that eliminates more or less separation of church and state uh, which, you know, there is no constitutional violation there, although con contrary to popular belief. Uh, a lot of people mix, this, mix up Thomas Jefferson uh, state to, I think he had a, I want to say it was an article or a statement to, I think the church of maybe Connecticut, it was somewhere in New England, that he was doing a speech, and somehow or another they took that speech to mean there's a separation between church and state. Well, let me make it clear to you, there is no separation between church and state. And this faith-based initiative, what it simply is, is that the church is taking money from the federal government. And that money that the churches are taking from the federal government came with some restrictions. Uh, one of the major restrictions is so-called ideology. And what that means is that no church can have its own particular ideology. Now, that's interesting because the church is supposed to be the vessel from which Yahweh speaks through. In your world, it may be called God speaks through. So if the church uh, is being told what to say by the government, then what purpose does the church serve other than a vehicle or arm or the fourth branch of the government? Now, if you go to your scriptures, if you know your scripture, you know clearly that Yahweh's man, we call preachers, some people call them priests, they're supposed to be hearing from Yahweh. They're, they're supposed to be the people who, through prayer, through reflection, through meditation, that's why they take your money, they're supposed to be your servants. And they're Yahweh's, you know, chosen uh, vehicles to give you information that services you. And not only that, they're also supposed to be individuals who properly interpret the Holy Scriptures, okay? So when you come down to ideology, 
what is an ali what is your what is the a church's ideology how can a church has have an ali ideology when if, if yahweh is speaking to them? what if yahweh told the churches or told the leaders of the church that going forward i want you to preach against homosexuality i want you to preach against it strongly i want you to preach against anything that that would would, would infringe upon you know mankind in terms of the growth of mankind i want you to preach against abortion I want you to preach against adul uh, adultery. I want you to preach against murder. I want you to preach against drug dealing and criminal behavior. What if, what if the Most High came and told that to your priest or to your pastor? Okay? What if the government say, well, that's an ideology. You can't preach against that. But that's what's happened through the faith-based initiative. You notice why the church, if, I don't know if you noticed, but they're very, very quiet. You don't hear them talking about abortions. You don't hear them talking about homosexuality. You don't hear them talking about murder. You know, a few of them will talk about adultery because adultery is that little sore spot that kind of pokes, you know, folk, especially, you know, no disrespect for females. Females, you know, get really a little wild when that adultery word come up, like females don't commit adultery. Yes, unfortunately, you do. You know, men too. But you notice it's real quiet you know, around all of those social issues that can transform society from a, I'm going to use your word, God-based society to a man-based society. In other words, you know, we live by the laws of man now. No longer, you know, do the ideology, the word of God matters anymore. So now that your government, through partnership with your pastoral ship, your servant leaders who are calling themselves preachers and pastors have gotten in bed together. And now what they're doing is they're preaching about, um, you know, there is no sin. You can do anything you want to do because, you know, Jesus died for your sins. Anything that you want to do because Jesus died for your sins. That's quote unquote uh, Joseph Prince. That's quote unquote uh, Crepro Dollar. Um, that's definitely Joel Osteen. Uh, T.D. Jakes don't say it that way. He just kind of says all inclusive. So in other words, he's saying the same thing too. Joyce Myers. And I bring up these bigger names because if you call yourself a believer or a Christian, surely you've heard of those names. If you haven't, then maybe you need to turn off the rap music and turn on TV and, you know, look at some of these Christian programs, you know, since you're a Christian. All right. But anyway, so you've certainly heard those names. Listen. Listen carefully to what you hear them saying. They're not talking anything about anything that would be considered an abomination. Now, this is not my word. And these things that I mentioned, by, by the way, are not my words. I'll give you an example. When you get a chance, look at Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13. Okay? Uh, yeah, no, Leviticus chapter 20, verse 18. And then I want you to go back and look at Leviticus chapter 21, verse 13. And you tell me what it says. Okay, I'm not even going to tell you what it says. I want you to go look at then. And some people will say, well, that's the Old Testament. Then I want you to go to Romans in the New Testament. And I want you to go to chapter 1, chapter 1, verse 27. I want you to tell me what it says there as well. So that way, you know, we don't get into this Old Testament, New Testament, you know, buffoonery. You know, the scripture teaches that the Most High never changes. So I don't know how, you know, and he says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that's in your New Testament, I might add. So if he says if he changes, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, where did this Old Testament come from? Now somebody's lying. Somebody's lying. And I suspect, if, for me, if I had to make the decision on who's the liar, I'm going to give that charge straight up to me. You know, I, you know, numbers, I think it's 23 and 21 right about that says you know yahweh is not a man that he's a, that he should lie or the son of man that he should repent which implies that man will lie and you show me a man who does not lie i'll show you a man who's mute how about that but getting back to the subject at hand when you start talking in terms of how now that society is as we know falling farther and farther and farther away from what we would call moral values. I mean, almost to the point now, 
that morality is, is almost frowned upon. If someone come and tell you, I don't sleep around, you know, I don't, you know, believe that homosexuality is right, that I don't believe that murder is right, I don't believe that, you know, not taking care of the poor, the sick, you know, I don't believe that it's right up for us not to do that. Man, you'll be, you be labeled. I don't even know what you'd be labeled of. I, I want to say you'd be labeled as a liberal, but you sure wouldn't be labeled as a liberal. I guess they'll say you're a conservative, but unless you're blind, you know, the conservatives are some of the major perpetuators in these churches of this new debauchery, and they damn sure were behind this faith-based initiative. And again, you know what, how I feel about politics, and it's not just me, it's just a fact. That's two busts on the same ass. You know what I'm saying? Democrats and Republican. And I guess if you got the Green Party and the Independence Party, that probably lies somewhere in the middle of the crack. Now, how about that? So, again, when you start looking at your church, you know, your pastors, I just want you to know, they have sold you out a long time ago. They're strictly in the game for the money. Most of them. Strictly in the game for the money. And if you don't believe me, now, again, go check out for yourself. What are they talking about? Money, 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 money. Remind me of that song from the OJ way back. Money, 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 money. Y'all remember that song? Some people got to have it. Some people really need it. We know about it. Do things, do things, do bad things to get it. That's where you are right now. So I'm just saying to you, it's time to come out of that foolishness. And if you're not going to come out of it, then you need to demand that 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 your that your servant who you're paying, you know, move away from faith-based initiative because as long as they're taking that dirty money, you're going to get filth coming from them. And I'm telling you almost all of them are taking that dirty money. So you make your own decision. At the end of the day, it's your children, I guess our children, I guess I'd be careful with that. That's going to pay the price for it down the road. But as the saying goes, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. But check out those scriptures I talked to you about. See what they say. If you think that when I say abomination, I'm out, I'm out of order. You know, go back and, and back it up. Go look up the faith-based initiative. Read about it. See what it's telling you. It's telling you unless they can only teach an ideology that supports whatever the globalist agenda is, the national agenda. And if it's going to offend anybody, they're not preaching it. But the Most High says that, you know, that offenses would come. And matter of fact, not only would offenses would come, but if you're afraid to bring forth offense, then you cannot serve him. So who are these men serving? The person that you're running into their synagogues every Sunday, giving your money to, being socially programmed by. These people, you, you know, you might as well save your money. You just go donate it to some, some political party. And that's all you're going to get. You're going to get the same result. And this is the last thing I want to say. You know, I mentioned this in a, in a previous video. And this is about uh, Obama. I'm going to say this real quick. You know, there are still people out there that does not know that, uh, that Barack Obama, and I met the man. I didn't, I mean, we didn't have breakfast together. But I met the man up close and personal. I mean, I don't know if, how many of you guys on this video can say you actually walked up to him or he walked up to you. You shook his hand. You followed me, looked him in the eye. I shook the man's hand. I looked the man in the eye. I'm going to tell you something. Man had no soul. Now, I know you don't like me telling you that these, these, these fellow, these so-called, you know, uh, Negroes, you don't like me saying, I'm telling you, I shook him more hands than I can count. I shook the man's hand. The man has no soul. There was nothing there. Nothing. Now, I don't know about this cloning stuff, and I'm not even going to get into all of that today, but I'm going to tell you this. He's a flaming homosexual. Go check out these names I told you about already. Donald Young. Another guy by the last name of Spencer, the gay bathhouses, Ron Manuel, the mayor of, of Chicago. These guys are filthy, dirty guys who are, you know, who live a double life standard. They sit there and project themselves to be one way and they live a total different way. And he's one of the ringleaders of it. So, yeah, Trump might be a, a, a misogynist, misogynist, and he, he is. But that other one, you know what I'm saying, is a liar. You know, undercover homosexual. Because if you're going to preach this agenda, then stand up and tell everybody that you're a homosexual. Chomp. Thank you, guys. Bye now.